I'm delighted to be here uh, to share some of our work on um, alcohol consumption in, in adolescence. So uh, we know that uh, heavy alcohol consumption in particular is linked to accidents, injuries, um, early death or, that, or an increased risk of early death, uh, educational failure and substance misuse throughout the life course. Um, and also, because of all of those things, including all of those things, it costs the economy billions of pounds per year in terms of treating the sort of social and healthcare costs of treating alcohol-related harms run into the tens of billions of pounds. So it makes complete sense that identifying potentially intervenable factors um, which could uh, help develop policy on alcohol reduction uh, harm reduction strategies um, would you know, be a good place to start when we're thinking about the things that shape young people's um, experimentation with alcohol and the patterns of their early alcohol use. There's quite a large literature that suggests that heavy alcohol consumption during adolescence um, is associated with heavy patterns of heavy use as well throughout the life course. So that whole idea about intervening early, adolescence is a potentially golden phase of the life course in which to intervene um, and try and shift trajectories of different behaviours, uh, very relevant really to the work that we're doing. When we're thinking about alcohol, it, it, it's, it's quite interesting in terms of the, the, the patterning of alcohol consumption over the last 20, 25 years or so. Data from the Smoking, Drinking and Drugs Survey shows a really clear and marked decline in the proportion of young people uh, reporting drinking and smoking and using drugs. But we really see this sharp decline from sort of the 90, late 1980s to sort of 30 years uh, on to the, the mid-20 the mid 20, 20 teens, if that's a, if that's a term. Um, but still, those young people who are reporting drinking uh, are still drinking at volume. Um, so the, the amount sort of per head drunk hasn't declined in that time. And hospital admissions, um, because of sort of drink, drinking-related problems um, in, in sort of teenagers and adolescents, remains a significant problem. But that decline in rates over the last 25, 30 years might have implications for the kinds of risk factors that are relevant now compared to them in, in terms of young people's uh, drinking behaviours, of course. There may be a shift towards different types of, of or, or different factors associated uh, with drinking patterns. The literature on drinking in adolescence points to sort of multiple spheres of influence. And we've sort of been testing some of those ourselves using um, earlier waves of the Millennium Cohort Study when uh, participants were, were just 11 years old, looking at their parents' drinking, looking at uh, what was going on with their friendship groups, um, and, and, and also young people's or, or children and, and early adolescents' expectations around alcohol. <laughs> so we documented uh, those associations in a couple of papers a couple of years ago. Really, what we're trying to do now um, is look further into adolescence, again to see what's correlating, what's, what's, kind of, what's associating with young people's drinking habits at, at this period, which could be, um, you know, which, well, which we understand as a formative um, phase in the development of health-related behaviours, including drinking. So that kind of leads into a, a very broad, it's, it's a, this is a descriptive analysis um, mostly, um, a broad research question in things, what are the factors that are associated with young people's drinking, particularly heavy drinking patterns um, in that kind of early mid-adolescent phase? So we're interested in a number of uh, factors. We're interested in the alcohol context. So are their parents drinking? Are their friends drinking? Is there availability of alcohol at home? That kind of thing. But also in the age of initiation. We're doing this work in collaboration with Mentor UK, a uh, charity which works with young people uh, in, in, and, and aims to reduce the harms from both alcohol and drug misuse amongst young people. And they were particularly interested in 
this idea of whether how early a young person starts drinking really has a bearing on their drinking patterns because when you sort of look at the, the literature, the jury's out really in terms of whether age of initiation is really linked to harmful drinking patterns. You know, a, a couple of sister, huge weighty systematic reviews published in just the last couple of years have come to entirely opposing conclusions on, the, on, on, the, on that question. So working with Mentor UK, a group of us, including Annie Britton, who's here, um, uh, Richard Watt, Amanda Saka, um, and Ben Thurman from uh, Mental UK have been, been working on this paper that I'm going to talk about in a bit more detail now. So looking at whether certain kind of, or, or what we've kind of uh, uh, categorised as spheres of influence, so alcohol context, social relationships, um, parental support and monitoring, uh, uh, so things that we've, we've kind of conceptualised as psychosocial risk um, factors, which I'll talk a bit more about in a minute. Um, seeing whether these different kind of spheres of, of young people's lives or these different um, uh, areas of potential correlation, um, how strongly they correlate with young people's drinking, particularly heavy drinking um, uh, uh, at age 14. So the data are all from the Millennium Cohort Study. Um, we've used uh, prospective data where it's available, so data from earlier sweeps. Um, but most of the data I'm going to talk about today, in fact all of the data I'm going to talk about today, are from the age 11 and 14 sweeps, where data were available for age 11. Um, so alcohol context, I've talked a bit about. We're looking at age of initiation, young people were asked, what age they were when they first had a drink, if they'd said that they had had an alcoholic drink. That was in the age 14 sweep. Um, we looked at their parents drinking. We well, can look at parents drinking right throughout the MCS. I'm sure many of you are very, very, well, I know most of you are very familiar with the data set, so we can get quite a detailed um, history of parental drinking. Um, whether their friends are drinking um, is, is important and, and almost all studies that should look at this show very strong associations between what's happening in friendships groups with alcohol uh, is, is, is strongly associated with young people's drinking. And the availability of alcohol in the home. So um, parents were asked about whether they allowed the, um, their young people um, to drink. And if they said yes, then they were asked how frequently that, that occurred. So it could be occasional or uh, you know, once a month or more, and so on. In terms of um, social relationships and social support, we looked at very many different markers of this. We looked at conflictual relationships occurring in the family home, so with parents in particular, and we looked at um, social support, confiding relationships with friends and with parents, um, and we also looked at closeness of relationships. So we, looked, we, we, we just really tried to capture um, social relationships, both with family members and also with friendship groups. Parental supervision and monitoring, um, we were used, used markers of whether cohort members were allowed to stay out late, so after nine o'clock at night, and whether they were allowed to stay out, um, uh, you know, whether they stayed out without permission um, overnight as well. And there were tons of other markers that we, that we, that we did investigate, so whether, whether parents knew whether, 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 where their children were and, and who they were with and what they were doing. So we looked at a range of kind of supervision and monitoring variables. Um, in terms of um, other behaviours, which we might conceptualise as risky behaviours, although personally I'm not particularly keen on that term, we looked at smoking, um, cigarette smoking and e-cigarette smoking, um, other drug use, uh, uh, playing truancy from, from, from school and things that you might think of as antisocial behaviours. Um, so there were a suite of questions around sort of being disruptive in public and setting fire to bins and smashing up bus stops, that kind of thing. Um, and then psychosocial markers, what we were, we, we were looking at, it's using that term super broadly, um, we looked at markers of self-esteem, um, we looked at social and emotional development and we considered uh, sort of happiness scores and a marker of depressive symptoms at age 14 
um, um, the, the, using the, the moods and feelings questionnaire. Were markers, and, and sorry, also a marker of educational in, engagement, which is kind of a global score about how uh, the cohort member was feeling about school and whether they were tired in school, whether they enjoyed school, all of those sorts of things. So basically, a kind of a global measure of how well they were getting on in school and how much they liked it, which we called educational engagement. And where data were available from the age 11 sweep, we looked at those markers as well as contemporaneous markers. So we had a huge number of variables which we looked at in kind of a gradual thinning out process. I'll just show you the um, data um, on the prevalence of the different drinking categories that we constructed. So 8.8% of participants could be categorised as heavy drinkers. They were young people who had drank five <coughs> or more drinks in an occasion in the last 12 months. About a third um, had said that they had drank, but they, would, they, they hadn't binge drank, so just over 32%. Um, a, few, a few of them, just, so just over 3%, reported having drank, but not in the last 12 months. So we call those not current, uh, well, not current drinkers. And then, as you can see, just over half of them um, reported not having drank alcohol. Now, in our sort of modelling, what we did was we looked, initially we looked at all of the different kind of uh, potential spheres of influence, so the alcohol context, social relationships, supervision and monitoring, uh, 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 other, other kind of behaviours like smoking and, and drug use, and the psychosocial kind of suite of markers. We looked at those in turn to see um, what was associating with um, heavy drinking as our main kind of outcome or exposure variable. And then um, what we did is then we, we ran the models fully adjusted once we'd uh, established those kinds of the, the levels of association from those batteries of separate adjustment. So I'm just going to show you really um, just, a, just three results slides. So if you just bear with me, we will, we'll walk through those. We did, um, for what I'm going to show you, this is based <coughs> on uh, a logistic regression analysis. Um, so it's very straightforward. And we control, the control variables that we included in every step of the analysis were age, gender, religion, so religious affiliation, and uh, family income. So those are sort of our background control variables. And I can talk about those, but I'm not going to talk about those in any detail now, but I, uh, obviously I'm happy to talk about those. So. Uh, what did we find? Bearing in mind that a lot of the conversation that we were having with um, Mentor UK was this sort of question about does the age at which young people start drinking, is, is, that, is, is that really associating with their drinking patterns, uh, in, in, in this case, during adolescence? And this slide shows really quite a striking uh, monotonic um, association there. So earlier age initiation um, having a stronger correlation with heavy drinking at age 14. Um, two bars for each age, so 11, 12, 13, 14 plus. Um, two bars for each, there's a partial adjustment um, and then a fully adjusted um, odds ratio you can see. That's five minutes to build on. Okay, thank you. Um, so obviously on adjustment for things you see the odds ratios um, coming down, but you know, Something like uh, drinking before the age, or starting drinking before the age of 11, having a twofold uh, odds of, of heavy drinking at age 14. In terms of the other markers of the alcohol context, parents drinking didn't correlate with heavy drinking at age 14 um, in this analysis. Friends drinking did, unsurprisingly, there in the middle of the slide, you can see the odds ratios for having some or all of your friendship group drinking. Um, the availability of alcohol in the home also correlated. So um, if parents were allowing their children to drink and if the, the more frequently that was occurring in the home, the, the stronger the association. Negative expectations around alcohol 
uh, when, they were, when they were younger, so at age 11, was protective, so lower odds with the, the higher number of negative expectations. And on the right-hand side of the slide there, you can see that those sort of markers of uh, supervision or, or monitoring uh, are correlating with, with the, the likelihood of heavy drinking. Uh, all of the measures of social relationships, so the sort of confiding relationships with parents and friends, those sort of social support variables, and having conf conflictual relationships with parents fell out completely. Um, all of those associations went, went, became uh, null. The next slide just gives you a flavour of um, what was happening with the health behaviours. So you can see there from left to right, cigarette use, e-cigarette use, other drug use, um, correlating as in the way um, we expect because we, you know, we expect these behaviours to cluster together somewhat. Uh, playing truancy as well had an association with heavy drinking. And um, when we were thinking about the sort of the psychosocial environment, educational engagement, self-esteem um, and happiness and social emotional difficulties um, all became null in this, in this analysis. Um, higher um, moods, uh, depressive symptom scores were associated with an increased risk of, of being a heavy drinker. So that's kind of a, a whistle stop through really um, of, of, this, of this particular small discrete piece of analysis. But I think what we've shown or what we would conclude from here is, is really what we would conclude, the very, very similar conclusions from what we were finding when we looked in detail at young people's drink or when, when these when cohort members were age 11. So when we were looking at the risk factors for drinking at age 11. You know, we were finding that multiple spheres of influence or multiple spheres of young people's lives appear to correlate strongly um, with, with their drinking patterns. So here, alcohol context appears important. So availability of alcohol in the home, um, as well as what's going on in their friendship groups. Other health behaviours, it's no great surprise that they're clustering quite strongly with, with heavy drinking um, in this kind of early mid-adolescent phase. Um, but conflictual relationships and, and confiding relationships and supportive relationships didn't come out and, you know, we would um, have hypothesis, we hypothesised that they would, um, they would sort of become uh, protective or, or risk factors depending on which way you were looking at those relationships and they didn't come out. And neither did self-esteem. A lot of the work that Mentor UK does, for example, is work on children and young people's self-esteem uh, in, in terms of building that to kind of uh, alongside kind of uh, alcohol and drug education programs. But those kind of markers of young, young people um, weren't really correlating with the risk of heavy drinking, as I said. But to conclude, multiple um, spheres or, or m multiple domains of young people's lives are correlating with their drinking patterns which, you know, points to the kind of the, the, the policy implications being that, you know, you, you need to look at what's going on with, in friendship groups, you need to look at what's going on at home, you need to look, look at what's going on in wider society and the promotion and the, the kind of uh, 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 the pushing of alcohol. Um, and I use the word push because um, as I've been looking at this more, the context around alcohol for young people um, is, is, is really quite alarming, especially when young people enter into higher education. Um, the push for consumption really is, is really very, very firm and uh, you know, can have multiple impacts on, on, on young people in, in, in terms of their broader well-being. So I will <coughs> wrap up there, Alison, because I think you're telling me to stop. <laughs> thank, okay, you. thank you very much. For